So why does my chain come off? I'll show you one of the main reasons. This is an MS362. It's a slightly older one. And this chain came through my workshop the other day. And this bar, off another saw, the bar and chain have been condemned. And I marked it with a, a sharpie where it came off. And I put it back on this saw. Basically the saw was needed to go out to side. But I marked it on this saw, and that's basically where it was. When it came through the workshop, the chain was off and it was around the back of the saw. So it had actually come off, and the guy just chucked it in the, uh, in the store. And this is basically why the chains jump, because you don't pay enough attention to the chain tension. There's other videos on my channel laughably call it, we show you how to tension a chain. Chains wear fast, basically when they're blunt. You're pushing on them. The more you push on a chain, force it to cut, the more it wears on the bar rails here. That tends to create burrs on the bottom of the rail. And there's a very big one here. This is bar erosion, and that basically happens because the chain is spinning around in this, this direction. It tends to try and orbit this point here, and when it gets to here, instead of conforming exactly to the bar, it tends to try and carry on in that orbit. If your chain is blunt, you haven't got the tension of the chain controlling the, chain in which the direction in which the chain runs. If you see what I mean. So if you've got your chain correctly tensioned, you won't get things like this. Hear that noise? That's my finger now on a burr, which is raised here. And you've got more burrs all the way along. And this has been slightly cleaned up, so I could see what was happening, see whether this bar was in decent condition and could be reused. But when it came in, it was completely covered in this stuff all the way over which suggests that it's been hot. This is resin, trees have resin in, even hardwoods. And if your chain runs hot, as here, and your bar runs hot, then resin tends to cake onto it. Nice clean shiny chain and nice clean shiny bar tends to suggest that your chain is nice and sharp. Shall we look at this chain? See here, there should be a pointy point on here but there's a flat spot and there's a flat spot on here there's a flat spot on here big flat spot on there and you see the damage on this uh, cutting edge so this chain is very blunt you look at the length of these cutters especially on this side let's turn it around for you you can see the chain isn't very old hasn't done very many hours you see the damage on here from this side. But if you look at it from the top, you'll see that this angle is very, very acute. So you've got a really pointy, pointy end, or you would have if it hasn't got damage on it. This one's not too bad. This is the angle. You can just see here. There's a guideline, which is your wear limit which you can also use as a rough guide to the angle at which you should be sharpening. And you can see this is much more acute than that angle. This makes your lead-in, your point, a lot more prone to damage because it is weaker. And if you come down here, you can see there's a great big overhang on here. Someone's used too small a file on this. You can see it on here as well. And they've also used it with the file actually pointing down. That's probably because the bar's worn and when they set their their wrist to give them their angle the chain flops over. So they've overcompensated for that perhaps. Apart from that depth gauges are all okay but basically they've been running a chain very very loose and very very blunt and if you look here 
even though this chain hasn't done very many hours, you've got these big burrs all the way along the bottom. Not so good on the GoPro. If you had a better camera, we could see it better. But basically the bottom of these, is mushroomed out because the chain's doing this all the time. Partly because these are really pointy and really grabby. You get the same effect if you knock these down. And if that's done all the time, then your chain gets damaged. And you see the burr there. So what is my chain come off? Because it's A blunt, B too slack. And if it does come off, it damages the chain catcher. You can flip round the back of the saw. And this extension of the back handle here is basically to protect your back hand, but you can still potentially get damaged. And here's the sprocket that came off it. And that's pretty worn, but not too bad. Thought you might want to see that as well. So there you go. And last thing, these are the cutters. That's the depth gauge. This is a tie strap. This is a tie strap. And you see the tie straps are the things that tie the chain together. These things here are the drive links. And there's reasons for them to be that shape. And if you look on here, you see this typical steel chain. See all these little pimples? They're there to carry a bit more chain oil along the orbit, if you like, of the chain as it passes through the guide bar. And if this was old and worn, those pimples would start to disappear. But they're all nice and clear, so that's another indication that despite its condition, this chain has not done very many hours. So this chain isn't going to be used any further because of this damage. By the time you correct these angles, it's going to be back to here, so well over half worn. And the guide bar has got this erosion here, and it's also got a bit of erosion here. And you've got a lot of play at the sprocket tip. So chain and guide bar have been condemned. But the answer to the question, why well, does my chain jump off? Usually because it's loose. I hope that was useful. This is me trying to show you where in all the bearings of a chain. This is that uh, condemned chain which I showed you a little while ago. And I've laid it out along the edge of this work mate and pushed it all back so as to minimise the length of the chain, basically uh, take the uh, effects of the wear out. And you can see where this is, lining up with this saw cut. And if I do that, that's the amount of wear in this chain, or half this chain. And I've seen chains a lot worse than that. Also, if a chain's been off the sprockets, you might have issues such as this. See where the corner of my spanner is? This is where it's hit a sprocket, hit the sprocket as it's come off, and it's made a great big burr to raise this. This has then got polished off, it's been forced back into the guide bar and run. And you can also see on here there are more burrs. That one's fairly large, another one there. So if your chain's had an off, it may be damaged. And if you force it back into the bar and run it like this, that's going to accelerate the wear on your bar. There's another burr there. Look. So, worn chain. See it? 